my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, this is the second video in a series of vlogs about my trip abroad to London, Oxford, and Stratford upon Avon. You can find my first video here, or you can just start here. This vlog covers our second and third days in London, so you'll follow us around the Clink Prison Museum, the Tower of London, the Harry Potter store, etc. You might notice a strange bit in the middle that is unexplained, but you'll figure it out later in future vlogs. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Yes, I'm right outside the breakfast. I'm not like too hungry. I'm usually not like a real hungry person in the morning. But um, yeah, they're offering breakfast from like 6.30 to 9.30. Uh, everyone's pretty much, <laughs> I feel like everyone's gonna pretty much wake up around like 8-ish. Probably gonna read my book. We wrote Reading Golden Sun. It's a good book, Pierce Brown. So far, it's been very peaceful, very nice culture. Uh, went across the street to the grocery store, got a few things, got this energy drink called Blue Bolt. Uh, should be pretty interesting. Hoping it'll kick me up with some energy and not exactly kill me the way that Red Bull does. And uh, I got a Mars bar. I don't know where that is. I'm gonna put that in. Yeah. first stop of day two was the Clink Prison Museum in Southwark. Um, the museum is built on the site of the destroyed prison, which was in operation from the 12th to 18th century. If you saw the vlog before this, we visited the Winchester Palace, which is directly beside the Clink. our camera actually started dying but as you can see it's me Troy the prepared guy just kidding Troy wasn't prepared but after that we ended up going to the Tate Modern Museum I'm not really a big fan of modern art but it was pretty cool to chill around there for a couple hours we also chilled out in front of the museum in the park they have there for a while I knew I wanted to go to Waterstones at some point during this trip and we ended up going this day
tourist effect, but it seems like every single UK cover is a hundred times prettier than every single US cover. So I knew that while I was there, I wanted to pick up this book by Brandon Sanderson. Unfortunately, I did come across another book, Across the Nightingale Floor by Leanne Hearn, didn't pick it up, and then realized when I got home that the US cover looks like this, and the UK cover that I could have gotten looks like this. So now I have to try to find that cover. The first thing on our agenda for day three was the Tower of London and the opening ceremonies. Hey, G. Okay, you will see me saluting every now and again. I'm actually saluting the keys, the Queen's keys, yeah? Elizabeth, seconde regina. Elizabeth II is queen. Queen Elizabeth the second our queen with the crown is known as the royal cipher they also wear the royal coat of arms because we are still traditionally and ceremonially part of the queen's bodyguard this is a cheap version of our uniform this one only costs about two thousand pounds my state dress cost fifteen thousand pounds about nineteen thousand dollars here they come back in the boat in the uh, the gate. Right, what you actually missed, I'll just explain what the ceremony was and why we have it. Well, first of all, the reason we have it, because at 10 o'clock each night, we lock the gates. Yeah, so we've got to, obviously if we lock them at night, we've got to open them again in the morning. But it's done professionally, because we are professionals, um, with a military escort. Because in its time, this place has been many things. It's been a royal palace. It's where the kings and queens of England lived over 500 years. It's been a place since here, 1303 that the raw regalia and crown jewels have safely installed. They're still here to this day. That's where they've all rushed off to now to go and see the crown jewels. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll make you a promise now. When you're inside the jewel house, everything you're going to see is real. There's no fake glass or paste. It's all real. This is not Disney World, this is real world. <laughs> <laughs> Including the world's largest white granite cut diamond. It's known as the Cullinan One. It's on top of the scepter, which is a gold rod, about three foot long. It's in the first glass case where you find the travel agent. Now, most of you ladies, I notice you've got a nice little diamond on your fingers. <laughs> most of them are usually around about half a carat, if you're lucky, if you're very lucky. <laughs> Imagine having one that's 530. Now, people outside didn't always agree what's going on inside. So to stop them getting in at night, and who knows, attack the king and queen, steal the bullion, steal the crown jewels, release the prisoners, smash the weapons up, who knows? We lock the gates. And that happens every night at 10 o'clock. Unfortunately, all footage and photography was banned in the jewel house, but honestly, I feel like my camera couldn't have done it justice anyway. When we got outside of the Jewel House at the Tower of London, we ended up coming across these weird wire mesh statues of monkeys. These are actually a nod to the animals that kings used to ship in to the Tower of London when they lived there. So they brought in animals like leopards and monkeys, you know, things that definitely shouldn't be in London, and kept them there for their own personal enjoyment. <laughs> I don't know, keep going. My legs hurt. <laughs> no. Oh god! <sighs> ah, okay, so this is the weird bit. So, did you hear that? Let's play it again. <laughs> Okay, I just want you to keep that in mind for later, okay?
There is no evidence that the princes were led. King Richard III is challenged and is killed at the Battle of Cosworth. The winner becomes the first Tudor king, Henry VII. The new king marries Elizabeth, the sister of the missing princess. The rumours do not become fact. Writers say Richard III definitely murdered them. Treason. Treason throughout the whole tower. Love you, thou art. Love you. This tower is renamed the Bloody Tower. In 1674, workers discover two skeletons by the White Tower. The king believes these are the princes and buries them at Westminster Abbey. In 1933, medical experts examine the skeletons and find the all the bones of two children. But, there is no conclusive evidence these are the princes. We may never know what happened to them. the Bloody Tower, we came out to a place called Tower Green, where they have a memorial for all the nobles that were executed there, including the three famous queens, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard, and Jane Grey. After we left the Tower of London, we ran into some friends from a group and decided to make our way to Harrods department store. It just so happened we could stop at King's Cross, and of course we did. Sadly, I don't have a lot of footage simply because there wasn't enough room for my body in that store, let alone my camera. Trust me, the footage I would have had, you wouldn't have wanted. Get this. Is this a passport thing? Oh, it is. Yep. I'm getting it. I wanted to go to Harrods to get gifts for my family, but it's like really intimidating there. Later I found out there's a dress code that I don't think all of us passed, but either way, everything is absolutely stunning there. You're about to hear me freak out maybe too much over a Gandhi statue. I love this. It's like Greek. Yeah, I love I, that. I, I, I do. It's like... Hey, which one's the male? It's Gandhi! Which, which one's it's freaking the, which Gandhi! One's the male, one's the Dude! Sorry. <laughs> which one's the, okay, which one's the male line? Which one's the female line? It's easy. Just look at it. This one's the female, this one's the male. The orb is power.
When we left Harrods, we ended up walking around for a little bit and then decided we were going to get McDonald's for dinner. I was curious about McDonald's in London because I've never actually been to a big city McDonald's anyway, let alone an abroad one, and it did turn out to be pretty different. They had a lot of different snack wraps, which I'm not used to. I think we have like four, maybe, where I'm from, so that was kind of cool. So that's the end of this vlog. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. My next vlog will be of us at the British Museum and Westminster Abbey, and I'll also have videos up of me talking about books and life and my cat, I don't know. Stay tuned. Hope to see you again. Bye!